in this video we're just going to do a summary of cave sketching which is basically coming from the application of differentiation within 10 minutes we're going to sketch and review the concepts behind uh, the cave sketching using calculus so that is the question we're going to solve we're going to sketch that cave where y is equal to x cubed minus x okay so just a few things that i want you to take note of i want you to understand the, the two parabolas of course we understand that there is a case where you have a minimum and then there's a case where you have a maximum okay so the first derivative the first derivative is basically what you get as you differentiate the, the given equation the first thing that you're going to get so in this case we understand that our first derivative is going to be so if you differentiate the equation we have you're going to have 3x squared minus 1 okay so we've differentiated our function so the way it basically works is this so whenever the the first derivative is positive it tells you the function is increasing so what is increasing increasing from left to right is going up like that so if you look at the two parabolas which parts can you identify as increasing so this is increasing then this is also increasing from left to right so those two parts are supposed to be uh, the first derivative is supposed to be positive for those two parts and then the other, the other part where the first derivative becomes a negative then it's supposed to be like this so if you look at the, the, the two curves so this is decreasing that is also decreasing okay now what differentiates these two curves if you look at this part here we've said the first derivative is positive okay if you look at the two curves in red that's positive so what differentiate them is now either it's going to be a minimum a maximum so that is decided by the second derivative now the second derivative requires you to differentiate the, the first derivative so the second derivative in this case is going to be 6x okay so i believe you know how to go about your differentiation so in such a case you look at the nature so when the second derivative is basically positive it's a minimum so when the second derivative is positive it's a minimum when the second derivative is negative it is a maximum now a case where it is equal to zero is a point of inversion so what exactly is a point of inversion so a point of inversion is a point where it's like this so we'll look at this and then you can basically have again something like then part of the minimum okay so this part where there is one part part of the maximum another part part of the minimum is what we call a point of inversion so understand as we basically perform the sketching so from what we've done now let's basically get to sketch this okay so quickly what i'm just going to do is i'm going to draw a line okay on the bottom like that so we'll use everything from there so the first step to our sketching is to find the first derivative now the first derivative is basically equal to 3x squared minus 1 so from there after you found the first derivative we need now to find the turning points okay so how do you find the turning points we equate the first derivative to zero so if you do that you're going to have your x squared being equal to 1 over 3 so if you try to find the value of x squared x is going to be plus or minus the root of what 1 over 3 so we've got two values one of them is negative other one is positive so negative root of one over three and then we also have a positive root of one over three so these are the two turning points that we've actually found in this case okay so we need to understand now the behavior of the curve between and outside uh, the two turning points so before the turning point so if you want to make things easier for yourself how can you look at this so 1 over 3 is the same as 0 0.3 carrying so obviously if you look at the square root of that what do you expect so it's obviously going to be a value that is less than 1 right it's a value less than 1 so therefore I'm able to predict the fact that this is negative the outside is positive that a 0 is one of the numbers in between 
and then of course one is greater than one the square root of one over three and then negative one is is smaller so we're going to use these as testing points to see the, the value of the first derivative remember we said when the first derivative is positive it implies the function is what is increasing so we'll start with uh, the leftmost part so looking at our first derivative we'll plug in a negative one so you understand that each time you plug in a negative to an even power it's a positive value right so you have 3 minus 1 which is going to give us a plus 2 so that plus 2 is a positive result positive result so that is increasing so this part is increasing now what about if you talk about the part in between so we can consider a 0 as, as I've put it so if plug in a 0 this part is going to be eliminated you remain with a negative 1 so you have a negative now a negative first derivative tells you a function is what is decreasing and then finally the last part which is after which is a 1 as our testing value which comes after a turning point it tells us uh, if you plug in if you plug in a 1 you have 3 minus 1 so which is positive so that part is supposed to be increasing so we've now observed the behavior of the curve by using the first derivative so we can quickly now find the second derivative to see what is going to happen now for the second derivative it's going to tell us whether we're going to have a minimum or a maximum so a second derivative we found it to be 6x so if you look at the 6x now how basically do we get so we get to test the turning points that's the way it is so if you plug in this turning point to find the nature to determine its nature if you plug in a negative value the fact that it's x is raised to the power one it will still be a negative so it tells us it being a negative tells us that the first part is going to be a maxima so a maxima is that then this part is positive so it's going to be a minima okay so now the points where these two graphs are going to join is what we call the point of inversion so a point of inversion is where the second derivative is equal to zero so if you divide if you find the value of x is x is going to be equal to zero so x is equal to zero becomes a point of inversion in this case so with this piece of information you should be able to sketch the curve okay now how is it going to come out so let's basically see using the piece of information we have so this is our curve that's our x or y plane so our point of inversion is x is equal to zero and then of course not forgetting that we have uh, turning points to be negative root of one over three and then positive root of one over three as also another turning point then the point of inversion has been found to be x is equal to zero so if you look at the k of x minus three minus x if you plug in the point of inversion there it's just going to give us a zero so a point of inversion is zero comma zero so which is that point there okay now for the turning points so for the turning points we have one being a maxima the other one to be a minima so this is what we are now expecting so this point is expected to be on top this point is expected to be on the bottom looking at the point of inversion okay so the other one is expected to be a maxima if you look at it it's expected to be a maxima so this point is supposed to increase then this point it will be decreasing before that's what the curve is telling us right so let's try to see so the sketch is going to be something like this i'll use white so that's a point of inversion So a point of inversion is a point where you have one part part of a minima then again you have another part part of a, a maxima like that so that's a point of inversion okay where the turning is happening from so now you can take another step so this is why it was necessary for us to have a second derivative to find a way to be a maxima or a minima and then the the first derivative was telling us whether it was going to be decreasing or increasing as we've seen it's increasing in between the, the turning points and then outside the turning points we've seen that both parts are increasing as shown on the number line on the bottom so you can also take a step by finding the y values how do you find the y values by basically substituting the turning points in the 
in the equation that we have now for me i didn't have a calculator so in most of the cases most of the assessments calculators are not allowed so a sketch like that one is is good enough okay so it's very very easy to perform cave sketching using a calculus okay so these are the very few steps that you would have to understand okay